Dragon Ball Daima is finally here, and I wanted to see what I could figure out about the show after just the first few episodes, and I've come to a conclusion that might be massively wrong, but I want it to be true so badly. I think Neva, or is it Neva and the subs are wrong? Whatever, I'll keep calling him Neva for this video, is the true villain of Dragon Ball Daima. Let's start with what we do know, though. Episode 1 of Dragon Ball Daima is both a way to remind the audience of the events of the Buu Saga and a chance for us to see how those events have a ripple effect in the Demon Realm, a realm only mentioned in passing during the arc proper. The king of the Demon Realm is killed by Buu, after all, and if it wasn't certain before, it's clear now that he was not revived by the wish made on Shenron after Vegeta's sacrifice or the wish made on Purunga at the end of the arc. This leads to a succession plan, which ultimately doesn't involve anyone other than Goma, the new king of the demon realm, and a presumed Mikayo Shin, Degesu, the younger brother of Shin. As Goma ascends the throne, a thought is put into his head. Could the ones so powerful they could defeat Majin Buu potentially invade the demon realm? They just assumed Babidi's revival of Buu would lead to the demon realm being invaded and destroyed or taken over. So beings with power beyond that are even more terrifying. This isn't a thought they come to on their own, though. Arinsu, the sister sister of Shin and Degesu is the one to suggest this possibility. Her motives clearly aren't from actual concern though, as she's apparently a doctor and wants to continue receiving research funding in a similar capacity to what Dabura gave her before. Perhaps the plan is to use this potential external threat as a way to secure research funding in the form of defense measures. Or maybe she's even planning a coup of sorts. Speculation aside, she clearly has her own goals and she is the person to establish this conflict between the demon realm and the fighters on Earth. So in terms of motives, we have Arinsu, who seems to have something to gain from a conflict with Earth, and Goma, who wants to assure his complete control over the demon realm by weakening the Z fighters preemptively to prevent an invasion. So where does the Namek come into this. Well, Neva is introduced to us as a senile ancient Namekian, but he's also the one who made the Dragon Balls for the Demon Realm and is more knowledgeable about the Dragon Balls than anyone else. You see, Goma needs him to help with the retrieval and usage of Earth's Dragon Balls. This is, of course, to make the wish to have the cast turned young in the hopes that it'll make them weaker, which I have doubts about, but I'll probably just make a short about that in the future. The second wish that doesn't happen due to Shenron not granting three wishes for first-timers is to get the evil third eye an artifact used and passed down by the Supreme Demon Kings that was lost during Dabra's father, Abra's reign. Placing it on one's forehead apparently grants unbelievable absolute power. Now, I think it's time we focus more on Neva. You see, I think we're actually being led on a bit of a double misdirection here. While there are hints of Arinsu being sinister, even going off to Universe 7 on her own before Goma, Degesu, and Neva did, I think her motives will ultimately just be self-interested and focused on her research that she seems truly invested in. Then there's Goma and Degesu, who are clearly grabbing at political power after Dabura's death, but their motivation to be wary of a threat stronger than Boo doesn't seem too misplaced, even if their preemptive and unnecessary actions with the Dragon Balls are what led to the demon realm having a target on it. Incompetence isn't necessarily sinister, but I think Neva is. For starters, Neva is powerful. Sure, the Demon Realm has a set of Dragon Balls that are only comprised of three Wish Orbs, but that doesn't necessarily make them weak. Sets of Dragon Balls can just vary by quantity, as we've been told and shown in the Granola arc of the Dragon Ball Super manga, but we've never been told their power is affected by the balls themselves, ever. The only thing we've ever been told about the power of Dragon Balls and their wishes is they're directly tied to their creators. Like with Earth's Dragon Balls, having been shown to be limited by Kami in the past due to him lacking enough power. So okay, this leads to two questions then. One, how strong is Neva? And two, if the Demon Realm has Dragon Balls, why not use them? Let's start with the second. They can't use the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls because they're guarded by the Tamagami. Okay, so the Tamagami don't obey the Demon King, but why don't they? Neva is the one who created them, and he seems to be at least somewhat subservient to the Demon King, so maybe the Tamagami don't serve Neva either. But there's this small scene when Neva's about to board Goma's ship and go to Earth where he seems to break the senile persona, telling a Tamagami it's doing good work, and then it bows to him. Seems pretty obedient to me. So I think that Neva doesn't let anyone use the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls, something backed up by Piccolo in Episode 2 when he says that Neva remained in the Demon Realm to guard the Dragon Balls. But that's actually a very strange reason to stay, and I'll explain why later. Even crazier than that, though, is no one has been strong enough to just take them from the Tamagami either. Which leads back to question one, how powerful is Neva? While his presumed Dragon Clan affiliation would make him not a true Namekian warrior by any means, he could still 
still be very powerful. Just think of how skilled and, at the time of his introduction, powerful Kami was despite being a member of the Dragon Clan. The Tamagami are directly stated to be made by Neva, and if we know anything about Namekian creations from how the Dragon Balls work, there should be almost no way he isn't around their power as well. The Tamagami might even be stronger than we think as well. While they're clearly stronger than Super Perfect Cell, due to the fact that no one's been able to get the Dragon Balls from them for a wish in an extremely long time, and Dabra was around the level of Super Perfect Cell. But we can extrapolate this even further. Goma sees the evil third eye as something that gives absolute power. This is while knowing how strong Majin Buu and the Z Fighters are. He thinks this artifact grants so much power, in fact, that he'd rather have it instead of wishing for everyone to be turned into children after finding out he only gets one wish. But if the Tamagami are still alive and no one has been able to use the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls for seemingly as long as anyone can remember, then it's fair to assume that the Tamagami are even stronger than the top tiers of the Buu Saga. And that makes sense since you'd want the story's strength ceiling to progress forward. Speaking of the Dragon Balls, Neva seems to have the greatest control over the Dragon Balls when compared to any other known character in the series. The ability to collect them with just a small showcase of his power and reactivating them early are a deadly combo, even if him doing so has a cooldown. Though I'm not certain it actually does, since as Piccolo said, Namekians don't like to be ruled, so this might be Neva being defiant. Even if it really is something he can only do once before needing to rest, how does he have this much control over the Dragon Balls? Does he actually know the most about them, or is he second to Zalama? You see, in Dragon Ball Super, we learned about Zalama and how the Namekians mined his Super Dragon Balls, eventually creating their own, and also seemingly learning how to recreate smaller, weaker versions from scratch. But when would this have happened? We know that travel from the Demon Realm to the outside world used to be common, so perhaps many thousands, probably millions of years ago, he left the Demon Realm and was the one to mine the planet-sized Dragon Balls, learning their secrets and reverse engineering them. This defiling of the planet-sized Super Dragon Balls may have ultimately led to the rule that demons aren't supposed to leave the Demon Realm, but not before the other Namekians left. Which is really important, because the Namekians did leave, but Neva didn't. Neva says himself that he hasn't seen another Namekian in thousands of years, and is even seemingly surprised they still exist. If Neva was just another Namekian, a people described as gentle in nature, why wouldn't they take him with them? Surely the Namekian with the most knowledge about the Dragon Balls and with the ability to create creatures so strong that they likely surpass Majin Buu would be a pretty useful ally for a dangerous journey to the outside world. It seems deliberate they left without him, and even more important, they might have done so without informing him. Piccolo seems to have been taught, likely via his memories from Nail, that Neva stayed behind to protect the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls, but does that actually make sense? We know from the Namekians being teleported to Earth in the Frieza Saga that Dragon Balls follow their creators as the Namekian Dragon Balls traveled to Earth. So wouldn't the Tamagami and the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls just follow Neva, and if the Tamagami have the Dragon Balls, just have them come along with everybody? Even more important than that, we know that Neva has been artificially extending his life, even earning an additional thousand years by helping Goma on Earth. So if Neva's goal is to keep the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls out of the hands of demons, wouldn't death be the best way to achieve that? It would, as far as we know, deactivate those Dragon Balls. In terms of the world of Dragon Ball, why fear death? It seems as though most characters have some understanding that there's an afterlife, so as long as you were a good person, there should be no issue with dying, right? Well, maybe he isn't a good person. He seems quick to agree with killing Dende, something even Goma can't bring himself to do, which does seem out of place for a supposedly sentimental, senile old man seeing a member of his species for the first time in thousands and possibly millions of years. Now with that sinister undertone laid, let's re-examine Piccolo's understanding of Neva. He says Neva stayed back to protect the Demon Realm's Dragon Balls and the Namekians left because they don't like to be ruled. What if the Namekians did flee for that reason, but it wasn't to escape the Supreme Demon King, it was to escape Neva, a Namekian powerful enough to rule all other Namekians. That's why he's surprised they still exist, but is still okay with killing them. They were his subjects, and they left him behind. I don't have all the details, of course, and let's be honest, I'm probably entirely wrong on this. But let's just assume for a second 
that he is truly sinister. Playing up a senile persona in order to appear weak while hiding his true intentions and power. A senile persona that we've seemingly seen break a few times already. Despite being powerful and likely very useful, he was abandoned by his own people, with a reason given by the Namekians that seems to be there to hide a darker past. He made creatures to guard his Dragon Balls with powers likely beyond Majin Buu, and knows more about the Dragon Balls than anyone due to his many thousands and possibly millions of years of life if we go by when Namekians would first get into Universe 7 to be known by Elder Kai like I explained in my timeline video. But hold on one second, that just might be one of his motives eternal life. If Neva is truly evil and has been for his entire life, he may know he's destined for hell and reincarnation. His goal is to seem weak enough to keep around while continuing to extend his life by being useful, becoming practically immortal. But why doesn't he just wish to be immortal on his own Dragon Balls, or eternal youth like Demon King Piccolo did? Well, this is a series for Dragon Ball's 40th anniversary, so that might just be the plan. A true Demon King Namekian directly from the Demon Realm with direct ties to its nobility waiting for his moment to gain his eternal power. Neva got the chance to go to a universe and planet with easily collectible Dragon Balls. Dragon Balls that can grant eternal youth at the very least, and likely immortality as well. Since we've seen these types of wishes are possible before on good Namekian Dragon Balls, they're clearly wishes that fall within the rules of the white magic we've just learned the Dragon Balls in the outside world are made of. Why just casually drop this line if it doesn't mean more? What is black magic and what's made of it? Maybe Neva's Dragon Balls are. I think Neva will need the outside world's Dragon Balls for his wishes because the wish falls under white magic, and his Dragon Balls grant wishes with black magic, likely meaning they have different rules, and more importantly, a sinister connotation to any wish made. That's why they would need to be guarded and can't be used by anyone. They could be used to cause harm, potentially to even Neva himself. But now that he's aware of Namekian surviving, more sets of Dragon Balls made of white magic he can easily use, and potentially how to freely go to and from the demon realm, I think nothing is stopping him from getting eternal youth and us learning what his true intentions are. Don't forget, we know that Neva definitely makes a wish on the demon realm's Dragon Balls from the trailers, and if they're actually made of black magic, that could have dire consequences for the demon realm and potentially the entire universe. Or maybe I'm just wrong about everything. Man, I love having a new Dragon Ball series to make theories about, so make sure you subscribe for more, and thank you so very much for watching.